All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Brandy Weaver, who is in Denver, Colorado. Welcome, Brandy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Brandy is an expert in brand partnership and live events with over 15 years experience in the industry. Uh, she is dedicated to helping grow brands, understanding of how to reach potential through events, influencer marketing and sponsorships. And we're going to talk today about effective brand activation. And, and I just want to start with the definition, Brandy, because to some people may not know what brand activation, what that term means. So could you start off by giving us a, 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 a brief tutorial on what brand activation is? You bet. So brand activation um, can really mean a lot of different things for a growing brand. Um, but the main thing is they've decided to create an experience um, that takes action. And really the goal there is some sort of data capture or connection with their current audience or their future audience. So um, it's really, it's really important for growing brands. And today we're going to kind of discuss that as far as it goes with live events. Mm -hmm. um, so I have been a sponsorship coordinator for many years and I continue to see the same problem. I would have brands decide to sponsor and then they lack the plan of the on-site activation piece or even a digital activation piece. Um, there really just wasn't a plan. They were, their team was excited. They wanted to be involved in the event. And then when I started to ask the questions, like, what are we going to do? They didn't have the plan. Um, and that's when I decided I would start working with brands to help them create that plan. Mm -hmm. um, because there are so many different ways, whether you're an exciting um, uh, beverage brand or a CPG product, or just a, a normal everyday business like an insurance company. Mm -hmm. There are many ways to activate at, at events and obtain that engagement, that emotional connection, and maybe even capture some of the, da the data. Yeah, I mean, because let's face it. I mean, a lot of people, uh, a lot of times, you know, we 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 spo we sponsor events, or we, you know, uh, we go and we uh, uh, display at events or exhibit at events, and and it just seems like everybody kind of does the same thing. They just kind of turn up on the day, set up your booth or whatever it is, or 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 sponsor the event. Maybe you have a a speaking role or something like that. And then maybe gather a few cards and a few contacts and you go. And then later on, you look back and you go, wow, that was kind of a waste of money and time and effort. Um, so tell me, how do, how, do you, how do you get value out of these? Because, I mean, this is something I know a lot of people struggle with. And, I, and we have in the past, uh, to be honest. Yeah. So what we do is we work with... Um, the growing brand or company and we decide what what do they want to get out of the event um what is that um what is that end goal and we kind of work backwards through that goal um, we we set the goal then we decide what kind of kpis key performance indicators are we going to set to reach that goal and then we start to do some of the fun stuff and, and on the front end. And, you know, like you're talking about doing conventions and trade shows, you're right. They look very similar. They have the background, the table, the tablecloths and the literature. Well, after a while, I mean, if you're somebody that has to go to many conventions a year, that they all look the same. It's, yeah. And it's you, you don't remember them. So finding a way to decide, you know, let's, let's say you were a real estate company and you're set up at a convention, um, you know, that tends to look the same, but maybe you do something creative where you, we already know what the, what the convention is going to look like and how everyone's going to look the same. Maybe you create a lounge in your, um, in your space and you're showing some sort of music videos or something, something that's a relief um, from the, from the actual convention. And 
and then inside, right, we can't just have them setting and because then how are we going to, um, how are we going to capitalize on that? Well, then we come up with activities kind of in the booth that are very organic for your, you have, if you have a bunch of realtors out there, um, how, how they're going to use the different activities to engage. And really what the point and all that is, is just to be remembered at, right. at the end of the convention. And, and obviously to make sure that they do have your contact information, you have their contact information and you can retarget them after the event or reference a conversation that you had in that lounge and, and open the door to kind of nurture that relationship um, because maybe that person isn't buying a house or isn't um, ready to, if you're an investment realtor, maybe they're not there yet, but you've already started to nurture that. So I think it's really important, you know, whether you're doing trade shows, conventions, music festivals, any type of event to really decide how are you going to stand out? If everybody, you already know, everybody's going to look the same. What little things can you do? So so those people, those customers remember you. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great point, because I always feel like when you go to conventions or conferences and you go to go through the exhibit halls, it's like it's so awkward, isn't it? I mean, regardless of whether you work the booth or whether you're walking through the, the floor and we've all worked boots so, uh, over the years. Yeah. Um, it's just so awkward, like people are walk or you're walking by and you're trying to look at what they do, but you don't want to attract their attention because you don't want to just get this download of and, and all of that. And uh, and so there's always that kind of weird, awkward tension in in a in an exhibit hall. I I find anyway. And so what you're outlining there is I love that idea of actually coming up with something that gives respite to people. That that's a that's a super idea. Yeah, I think it's important because, like you said, those those scenarios versus you know something fun like music festival that that that's already all made around fun. Um, but trade shows and conventions, they can be, they can be tiring and you are speaking to people all day. You're exhausted. Um, just having a space to maybe just relax. And like I said, that, um, that connection be a little organic there. And you just like, you're like, man, that was, I, that booth saved me. And so mm -hmm. you remember who, whose booth, what were you in that, that saved you uh, mm -hmm. for a little getaway? Yeah. And then the idea of, of selecting the right type of events to go to, because I think this is always a, this is always a struggle for people. I mean, sometimes it's very obvious, like there maybe is you're in an industry or in a niche that there is a convention or two that everybody goes to. So it's kind of a no brainer. But for a lot of people, there's so many events and so many different things they could do is how do you how do you help people choose the right events to go to? Well, um, you know, that, it, that can be tough. And I think a lot of times we really use, I, you know, I hate to be cliche, but out of the box methods where if you're going to um, a convention where everyone is the same and you do the same, I'm going to tell you that might not, like you said, you have the few a year that you've got to be at so you can network with the usual, your usual people, but um, that might not be the right fit for you to go to a convention where you have something to offer the, those attendees, but you really don't have anything to do with the industry. And, and then you can make an engaging booth. You stand out because everybody, everybody, if it's an, oil field, or, you know, if it's an oil field convention, I used to see this a lot. And this is kind of where that started to come from. Um, I was in the oil field, you went and you saw all the service providers, it all looked the same. But you know, the ones that I remember were um, the, the places, the resorts that marketed to them, or um, the hunting leases, the things that were fun, and exciting. Um, but had really nothing to do with that industry. Um, I did, I did remember those cause I was like, those are, those are different. And you can kind of use, even though if you're marketing a service, maybe your service isn't as fun as resort, 
but you can make your, your business stand out. And, and like I said, be, be fun. And everyone's like, Oh, did you see, you know, it was maybe a, I don't know, you're at a, d- a dentist convention and a speaker company decides to come in, um, like a, a mobile speaker, yeah. you know, a JBL comes in and that's different because you, you weren't really expecting somebody like that product or that brand to be there, but they stand out because they're not, they're not the same. So mm-hmm. I think, um, kind of going outside of the usual. Mm-hmm. And what you mentioned before, obviously it's, in, it's incredibly important for you to figure out what your what your purpose is for being there, what you're trying to get out of it, uh, you know, whether it's just brand awareness, whether you're trying to capture leads, whether you're trying to connect with a particular audience or, or get across a, a, a particular message. Because I feel like, uh, again, I feel like a lot of people just go from convention to convention and just do the same thing every time. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I think they do. And that's where, um, you know, that's where if a company is is sending their sales team to convention after convention like that after a while it i don't know that it works anymore and mm-hmm. that's kind of that's where i recommend maybe hosting your own event um because you can decide who's on the guest list you can you can even invite you can get really creative and send little boxes and really snazzy invites to somebody that you want to do business with and you've created your own event with maybe a hundred or 200 people. And then you put your sales team in that environment. And sometimes that's going to be, that's going to be more um, productive for your sales mm-hmm. team. Yeah, it is though. Um, I mean, that, yeah, I, I agree with you, but it is, it is to some degree, uh, quite challenging right now, actually, to get people to turn up, right, to events. Um, one of the things that we noticed recently was that you know, if you do an event in a city, um, people are now working remotely, so they're not in the city anymore. So it's a, it's a kind of a chore for them to come uh, to come downtown. So there's the, there's these kind of little challenges you have now around actually getting people to come and getting people to commit. The other thing too is, to be honest, is people will say yes and even sometimes pay to go to an event and then not show up it's quite bizarre so what are some of the ways that you can work really hard in the in the build-up to make sure that you get a turnout well that's a a good question uh because it is it's a very tough um i'll call it a grind to get people there i think to again, make sure that you offer a couple different things. Um, Something, I'm going to go back to something fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's one. You you look at the the guest list uh, of the type of people there. And you're like, what, what do they what would you say they need to get out of the event? And you make sure that in your messaging, it's very obvious about well, if I do drive there, I, you know, I could leave with this kind of relationship and nurture and make sure you're not, um, you might host the event and you have one, one agenda, but don't forget about the other, other people you have involved in your event or the people you're asking to attend the event, make sure that there's something, um, that they are going to leave with, um, whether that's information, connection, um things like that because because part of the reason why people don't show up is because time is precious these days Mm -hmm. we're all so busy we have a million things going on in our careers and our home lives so to just attend an event that's like every other event maybe see the same people you see over and over and um, have a few glasses of wine and some food isn't enough reason to show up anymore so knowing what kind of connections they need to make almost kind of matchmaking um right. making sure that your guest list offers something for everyone on that on that um attendee list is really important because people need to know that they're like i said if there's education or different mm-hmm. networking connection opportunities they need to know that from the beginning 
And then whether it's your event or whether you're uh, at another exhibiting or whatever at another event, um, again, oftentimes you go to the event, gather a few cards, come home, maybe send a few emails, maybe a, a series of emails, and then it kind of dies on the vine. What, what should you be doing post-event? Post event, definitely send the send the follow up email. Um, after follow up emails, I would kind of come up with a plan for how when are you going to be able to connect with that person again? Um, if there maybe there's or that client again, if there is another event industry, maybe you you invite them to go with you. Um, there's just a series of things depending on your goals that you're going to want to nurture, nurture those contacts and not just send the follow-up email, you know, say it was nice to meet you and leave it at that. Um, I would come up with very distinctive ways to continue to connect. And again, everybody's scenario is different. So I'd have to sit down and, and see, sure. um, what that connection was to come up with something for you but um i would not leave it alone but um but kind of nurture it and then even if that's an event you're going to have and you're going to have next year make sure you put a reminder so you can reach out to that person before the event and maybe make some plans to to go to coffee during the event or mm -hmm. or um something like that yeah. What have you said? One of the things that uh, that I, that kind of uh, I've observed is that the the conventions and live events, if we just stick business related ones right now, it's like they haven't changed at all. Like they have the same format all the time. I mean, I spoke to somebody who is actually in the business of putting on events mm -hmm. and I asked them and I said, um, what are you doing today that's creative? And they said, oh, well, you know, we can do creative themes. And I said, yeah, yeah, no, I get that. That's <laughs> fine. But I said, format wise, format wise, because everything is the same. It's like keynotes and breakouts and exhibit halls. And it's also kind of formulaic. And, and if you like, uh, a little staid. Um, have you seen any examples uh, of either people like you mentioned earlier with the with the lounge idea, but people getting creative at those events or even events that are being more creative than others? I have. I went to an event. It was so um, I've been to two events where I was like, man, that was so awesome. Um, one event we all went to. It was an outdoor networking event. We were we were all there and um, open bar music that type of thing and i went alone so this is probably why uh it really stood out to me um traveled to california for the event alone and went and so the normal networking type thing you're walking around you're kind of like you said looking at people's mm -hmm. uh, name tags trying to decide who's mm -hmm. who's what but what i didn't notice when i was walking around were uh the different color lanyards so about an hour and a half into networking, they got on and they explained to us um, that we all needed to look down and we needed to look at our lanyard color and that there were buses uh, waiting and we were to get on the bus with our lanyard color. And so, okay, so got on the bus with my lanyard color uh, color and we all ended up in different places and we went to intimate I'd say about 40 to 50 person dinner mm -hmm. and they placed us all at this dinner because we all had something in common or something to offer uh, one another. And it was a large table. Uh, it was kind of, it was kind of a square. So they forced us to engage and um, it was a very, it was a quick dinner. Um, but it was so unique and I more or less knew, I found out a little bit about every person at that dinner and then got, it was able to get back on the bus and um, return to where, to the hotel where the uh, event was happening. And I just thought that that was so unique because, you know, you, like you said, the keynotes, the breakouts, well, what people don't take into consideration 
there are, there are days where I'm an extrovert and there are days where I'm an introvert uh-huh. and I need to go to the event because that extrovert person, you know, needs the contact information um, with this person, but I just don't have it. Maybe I don't have it in me that day, but if the breakout sessions more sometimes curated connection, um, I think, I think that that's, I think that's huge that it could really set you apart. I went mm-hmm. to another smaller event where we all got a logo cup when we walked in and we were hanging out and later they told us, you know, look on the bottom of your cup, there's a number. And before, you know, we had 45 minutes to net to speak to one another and find the person with the matching number. Mm-hmm. And again, caused, um, it caused engagement there and it was so much needed. I left there feeling like that was worth every nickel. And I think thinking like that, again, trying to help people because there are a lot of people that are introverts and how can we, how can we help them engage? Yeah, because I mean, that's a really good point, because you feel sometimes it's like, you know, you, you the convention and you, you you sign up for it and they say, oh, here's all this profile of people who's going to be there and you're going to get to network and meet all of these people. And then you get there and there's just a lot of people milling around and they're all the same as have them are the same as you. Like you said, you could be in the mood to engage. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's or whatever. But I find a lot of conventions just don't focus on making that part easy. Or they think, oh, I've got a technology solution here. You can, in advance, you can, you know, connect with somebody and arrange a meeting. And then half the time people don't show up or they cancel or whatever is like that. So I agree with you. I think that's the most important point here. That is, if you're going to, if you're going to run an event, or perhaps if you're at an event, like you said, with your, is you, you find a way to make it really easy and fun and simple for people to engage with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think that that. With where, but like you said earlier, with the remote worker, I'm somebody, you know, I work remotely. And um, I think that as many people that do work remotely, when you go to a convention, that's that's something you are looking forward to. But then, yeah. like you said, it gets, it's awkward at times. Mm-hmm. So if there was more time spent on how can we get these people, because the more they speak to one another, the more they get to know each other, the more um, relationships are built, more money is made, more money back in the event's pocket. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, these are fantastic uh, tips, Brandy. Thank you so much. All of Brandy's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, so I own Brandy Weaver Partnerships, and we work with brands and events to grow their live event strategies we um we implement influencer marketing strategies we give them uh we give them strategies for sponsorships we also build out their activation we call us you tell us what your goals are we work through it and we can completely fabricate your applic your um your activation and and all the way to post event so that's what we do Fantastic. Well, listen, go check it out. Uh, I would encourage you to go check it out because I guarantee you uh, we've all wasted a ton of money over the years on going to events and conventions and sponsoring and exhibiting and all of this for for less than optimal outcomes. Let me put it that way. So I would go and encourage you to check out the work that uh, Brandy does. So thanks again, Brandy. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.